What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic, and over the past year or so, I've reviewed a bunch of new laser TVs, but they've all been priced anywhere from $3,000 to $6,000. Now, I know most people can't afford a $6,000 projector, so today I have the highly requested Jimmy Aura, which is a 4K ultra short throw laser projector that retails for $2,500, making it one of the least expensive laser TVs that I've reviewed on the channel. So in the box, you get the basic necessities, which includes a power cord, document documentation, a nice looking non backlit voice remote since it runs Android TV, and of course the projector itself. Now when it comes to design, I do have to say that it was nice to see somewhat of a different design from what we've seen from everyone else. Instead of white or black, Jimmy went with a gray finish on top and the top is slightly curved, giving it a bit of a more elegant and inconspicuous design. The front has a bit of a scooped shape and hides four 15 watt Harman Kardon speakers. There's a small power button on the right side along with a USB port and around the the back you'll find the rest of your ports which includes three HDMI 2.0 ports, USB, stereo and optical outputs, and an ethernet port. So priced at $2,500, you might expect this projector to be lacking on specs, but you actually get quite a bit for the money. It has a native 4K resolution using pixel shifting. It produces 2,400 lumens covering 90% of Rec. 709. It has a 0.23 throw ratio, so it can produce a 100 inch image from just over eight inches away from the screen. It has an adjustable focus, allowing it to produce an image size anywhere from 80 to 150 inches. It runs full Android TV version 10, so you get access to to a ton of apps as well as the Google Assistant. And it has game mode, which gives it pretty good input lag for you gamers out there. And speaking of gaming, this portion of today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. You might not believe this, but I was actually addicted to this game, dumping like 15 hours a week into it. So if you've never heard of it, Raid is a 3D fantasy RPG for desktop and mobile, where you collect champions from different factions and level them up to battle against AI or other players in PvP. They have over 600 characters, including the orcs, which have a pretty interesting story. After going to war with the Banner Lords, High Elves, and the Sacred Order, the orcs are just trying to survive. They end up finding an ally in Queen Eva of the Elves, even though they're not quite sure of her true motivations. You can find out more by playing the campaign. They just added a new Guardian Ring, and at the start of December, Raid is releasing one of its biggest, most anticipated features ever. So click on the link in the video description or scan the QR code on your screen to get a bunch of free goodies, including an energy refill, XP boost, an ancient shard, 200,000 silver, and a free champion. And all of this cool stuff will be waiting for you in the chest right here for the next 30 days. I wanna thank Raid for sponsoring this portion of today's video, and let's jump back into the Jimmy Aura review. So like most ultra short throw laser TVs, the Aura works best with an ambient light rejecting screen. Now, unfortunately it doesn't come with a screen which is expected at this price point. So I'll be using it with a 100 inch lenticular ALR screen that came with the Hisense L5. And when it comes to installation, it's pretty much like every other laser TV. You take a bunch of measurements, hang the screen and aim the projector on the screen. Now it can be a bit tricky, but as long as everything is measured properly and it's sitting at the right height, it should line right up. And if it doesn't line up, you can use the eight point keystone correction to make it fit. So as I mentioned earlier, the Aura runs Android TV version 10, and this projector has one of the fastest boot times I've seen from a laser TV, taking only 12 seconds to boot up. Now I've talked about Android TV in several other videos, so I'll spare you the lecture, but Android TV is probably my favorite TV platform. The included voice remote allows you to use the Google Assistant with all kinds of cool voice control options, and you get a ton of apps and customization as well as a bunch of games. The only app that I found missing was Netflix, which we've seen is pretty common with some projectors. Aside from the Netflix issue, I was able to stream 4K movies from Plex, YouTube, and Disney Plus perfectly over Wi-Fi with no issues. And since it's running Android TV, the projector's functions are built right into the OS. There aren't a ton of menu options, but the menus do make sense and are easy to navigate. And the overall brightness of this projector is good. With 2400 lumens of brightness, it works fine on a 100 inch screen in a room with a few windows, as long as you use an ambient light rejecting screen and you don't have too much sunlight. So overall, when it comes to brightness, the Aura gets a 6.5 out of 10. Now, even though it doesn't have the color accuracy of some of the more expensive laser TVs, it does have fantastic sharpness and focus uniformity. Now, every once in a while, I did notice that certain shades of red, orange, or yellow did look a bit strange, which was expected considering the color accuracy, but overall, it produced a good image. So for SDR content, I would give the Aura a 6.5 out of 10. 
Moving on to HDR, I played a few movies from my local Plex collection and I was surprised by how well the Aura handled HDR content. It does a great job with shadow detail and the overall tone mapping was great. Now even though the HDR looked fantastic when playing movies directly from the Android TV interface on the projector, when I went to try to play 4K HDR movies from the Nvidia Shield, I noticed that the HDR movies had way too much contrast, crushing shadow detail and highlights. I'm not quite sure what was happening, but I think there might be some sort of bug with tone mapping on external devices. Now to be fair, the built-in Android TV interface works well enough that you shouldn't really need an external player, but this does affect things like gaming and Blu-ray players, so it should be noted. Considering the issues with the external sources, I would give the Aura a 6 out of 10 when it comes to HDR. And moving on to black levels, I have to say that I was really impressed. Considering DLP projectors don't typically have good black levels, I was expecting it to be mediocre, but the blacks from the R were pretty good. Believe it or not, it actually produced better blacks than the top of the line Samsung and Hisense laser TVs. And what's even better is that decrease in the brightness brings the blacks down even further. So when it comes to black levels, the Aura gets a 9 out of 10. Alright, moving on to sound, and this was another place that really surprised me. The Aura has four 15 watt Dolby speakers made by Harman Kardon, and they sound really good. Not only did they have great imaging and detail, but they have a pretty wide sound stage and even produced a good amount of bass. Now the one thing that could have been better is volume since I did want it to be a little louder, but overall the sound was really good and worked great for TV or the occasional movie. Now as with most laser TVs, I do still recommend external speakers, but if you're not picky about sound, you could definitely get away with these speakers. Overall, I would give the built-in speakers an 8.5 out of 10. And also related to sound is projector noise. Now the Aura is pretty quiet overall and I could barely hear any fan noise while it was powered on, but it does produce a small amount of laser whine. Now it is really faint and less noticeable than other projectors that have laser whine, but I did notice it sitting about 10 feet away, so it is worth a mention. And finally on to gaming. Well gaming on the Aura was pretty good. I got an average input lag reading of about 35 milliseconds in both 4K and 1080p, making it a great option for most gamers. The only laser TV near this price point that could compete when it comes to input lag is the Hisense L5, which has an input lag of about 25 milliseconds. But the black levels and overall image quality from the Aura make it a good option for gamers, so for gaming it gets a 7 out of 10. So overall, the Aura is a great laser TV that offers quite a bit in spite of its lower price. It has good brightness, low input lag, a great operating system, and impressive black levels. Cost-wise, it competes with projectors like the Hisense L5 and the original Vava, but the Aura has more features and benefits than those two projectors. Either way, I think the Aura is a worthy competitor and offers quite a bit for the money, so when it comes to value, I would give it an 8 out of 10. I do have to admit that I wasn't quite sure what to expect with this projector, but I'm proud to say that I was pleasantly surprised. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, as always, go ahead and make sure you mash that like button for me. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.